through by goal question. Go on, roll. Is there any way in this current uh, climate that you think your ideals could be practically feasible? Because I'm with you, but I don't think it's looking hopeful. Right, ladies and gentlemen. Every movement that has ever stood up against social injustice has always faced resistance from the elites who benefit from that social injustice. The Labour Party supporter are the middle class elites. They benefit from the current system and its injustices against working class communities who incidentally are made up of people from all ethnicities but whom the majority are white but ladies and gentlemen just as Martin Luther King fought against the apartheid system in America and black Africans fought against the apartheid system in South Africa and were imprisoned and were villainized so the working class communities of England have a fight on their hands to have their grievances recognized by the champagne socialists who fetishize them but won't lift a finger to actually help them and would rub their hands with glee at the thought of them being hit by police batons bit by police dogs and sent to prison whilst they set free machete murderers whilst they ignore other communities performing the same crimes and their own middle class friends like those from Hope Not Hate who have done the same crimes and so to answer the brother's question yes there is hope, but it will take courage, conviction, discipline, organization, the ability to build alliances with those who are willing to side with you, the willingness and the ability to organize and be disciplined in your activism and to engage your friends and your family in standing up against the British apartheid of the comfortable champagne socialist. Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? I'd like to ask, um, during the lockdown, the police, the Metropolitan Police closed Speaker's Corner, which is the first time in history which Speaker's Corner has been deliberately closed by anybody, including the police. Do you feel there was two, do you feel there was two policing taking place during the lockdown as well? So, ladies and gentlemen, yes. two-tier policing predates the current situation. For 40 years, Muslim grooming gangs were swept under the carpet. Two-tier policing has been going on for decades, ladies and gentlemen. And it has affected us in all kinds of ways, including during COVID. Because who remembers that the Mus uh, sorry, that Black Lives Matter protests coincided and overlapped with Covid protests and that pro-Palestinian protests overlapped with Covid protests but they were policed differently by the authorities ladies and gentlemen so this issue predates the current situation the current situation is a symptom of a problem, not a cause of the problem. The problem are the injustices socially, economically and politically meted out upon working class communities who won't vote Labour and so champagne socialists who do vote Labour are punishing working class communities because they don't vote for our great leader 
ma in fiora che a stama. Per Jong Un. Um, what possible sank? What, sorry, what possible solutions um, could you outline uh, uh, to, to help those um, who have been sanctioned, you know, say for Islamophobia, say if they've been banned or like that? So, ladies and gentlemen, the question about Islamophobia has been raised in yet another spasm of the tyrannical impulse of the Champagne Socialists, they are seeking to outlaw Islamophobia, ladies and gentlemen, which they want to define as a form of racism in which criticism or perceived criticism of Muslimness is going to be outlawed. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a bad law from beginning to end. The only way to defend our freedoms is to pass a free speech law in which Islam is not afforded special protections. It is not Islamophobic to criticize child marriage. That's just common sense. It is not Islamophobic to call for the end of slavery. That's just justice. It is not Islamophobic to stand against apostasy laws. That's just called religious freedom. It is not Islamophobic to stand against religious apartheid as embodied in Islamic dimitude. That's just called standing up for justice. It is not Islamophobic to criticize a prophet because the champagne socialists love to do it to Jesus, showing their hypocrisy from beginning to end, ladies and gentlemen. If we cannot have a free speech law, and if the tyrannical champagne socialists insist upon passing an Islamophobia law, then that same Islamophobia law should be accompanied in exactly the same terms a Christophobia law yes. and a Hindu phobia law. And if you don't think that Hindu phobia exists, just look at what is happening to those poor souls in Pakistan, sorry, Bangladesh, Bangladesh and Pakistan right now, where Christophobia and Hindu phobia are mainstream cultural pastimes. Go and look at what's happening to the Christians of Egypt, where Christophobia leads to anti-Christian pogroms on a regular basis. That our greater good, our social betters living in Islington and all the other middle class boroughs like Clapham don't criticise won't criticize because the spineless jellyfish are too frightened to be called racists, ladies and gentlemen. If you don't believe me, let them represent Tarzan as a black man. It won't happen because Disney will never portray a black man acting like a monkey on camera. Now that point, ladies and gentlemen, is to demonstrate the fact of the hypocrisy of the liberal elites. Because they take other characters, including historical white characters, at the time of England's Reformation, and present them as black. Because they don't have the imagination or the willingness to actually lift up 
Real black heroes. Why not do the biography of Martin Luther King? Why not do a serial about the Ethiopian courts of the Grand Nagus? Rather than what blackwash white history. It's not like black communities haven't had great civilizations. They have. Why not tell the story of Shaka Zulu? There's great stories to be told, but our elites are so ignorant of those stories, they have to blackwash white historical characters and distort the telling of British history. No one would complain. I would love them to do a serial on the Ethiopian courts and the story of the Ethiopian kingdoms. It's just as fascinating as anything you'll ever find in a European court. The racism isn't coming from the working class. The racism is the patronizing racism of champagne socialists who are too frightened to expect us all to live up to the same standards. And that's why some communities are policed with light feather gloves and some communities are policed with a mace. Sorry, I went on a bit. Next question. Someone else ask a question. Any other question? Any other question? I'll come back to you. And I'll come back to you. I'll come back to you. Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? You use the term champagne socialists a lot. Could you clarify exactly what you mean by Yeah, love to. <laughs> love to. Nothing makes me happier than exposing the lily-livered, yellow-backed, two-faced, arrogant, patronising, villainous, hypocritical, jellyfish, champagne socialists. Okay, okay, okay. Let me tell you what a champagne socialist is. A champagne socialist hosts a dinner party to all their white friends and then talks about the evils of racism of those extreme poor white working class people. A champagne socialist has never had their children groomed by a Muslim gang or had, their, or had anyone attacked or their churches assaulted by a refugee or been sexually harassed in the street. No, a champagne socialist has never suffered from what it means to have your culture stripped away from you or your voice taken from you. No, the champagne socialist earning over 30,000 a year, having owning their first or their second class, second house, going on holidays two or four times a year, wouldn't even dare to walk in to a working class estate or to sit in a working class pub or go to a working class church because all their solidarity is just virtue signaling talk that they say to their friends and has no real practice. The champagne socialist is a Labour voter. Most Labour voters are not poor. Most Labour voters earn above the average wage, ladies and gentlemen.